The left is the party of chaos. Riots, destruction, that's their whole brand now. I gotta say, though, it is losing its novelty. Eventually, it just becomes dangerous background noise, like a white noise machine that murders people. Call me Hollywood. We, on the other hand, want order. But how we get there is a big question. Of course, there's a bad kind of order, like the order of Terry Gilliam's Brazil, or of modern architecture. But really, that's its own kind of chaos. Call it chaos in a suit and tie, which is also my nickname for this guy. But there is a good kind of order. Okay, don't play that every time I say the word, it's already getting annoying. As I was saying, there's also a good kind of order, one that's more human. The problem is we seem to think that that kind of order just happens, and that's because we are materialists. C.S. Lewis said, To the modern man it seems simply natural that an ordered cosmos should emerge from chaos, that life should come out of the inanimate, reason out of instinct, civilization out of savagery, virtue out of animalism. But that's not how it goes. Cinderella's mice aren't going to come and get us dressed up for the ball. So where does order come from? That's the question of Russell Kirk's essay, Order, the first need of all. The introduction to his book, The Roots of American Order. Speaking of, where can I order one of those suits? For Kirk, there are two types of order that are intertwined. Moral order of individuals and the civil social order of society. And America was built on both. Without a high degree of private moral order among the American people, the reign of law could not have prevailed in this country. Without an orderly pattern of politics, American private character would have sunk into a ruinous egoism. Good citizens make for a good society. And a good society cultivates good citizens. It's top-down and bottom-up. You don't have to choose between chickens and eggs. We can have both. For now. Good individuals and good society grew together, but they also died together. In America, order and justice and freedom have developed together, but they can decay in parallel fashion. In every generation, some human beings bitterly defy the moral order and the social order. Although the hatred of order is suicidal, it must be reckoned with. Ignore a fact, and that fact will become your master. Our society's health is dependent on the health of our people, and vice versa. Like Plato before him, Cicero understood that the problem of order is simultaneously personal and social. Roman men and Roman justice had declined together. It is so still. But that American order that we took for granted, the one that let people walk down the street without fear of roving gangs of murderers, that was the product of over 3,000 years of human striving, from the ancient Hebrews and Greeks through medieval Britain and the Reformation. But in every generation, you'll have people who just hate order's guts, and you have others who think they can create a new order from scratch. For all our talk of democracy, we don't give much credence to tradition, what Chesterton called the democracy of the dead, and not in the Joe Biden way. Tradition is just listening to our ancestors, but we think we're better than that. Here's Kirk again. A freshman once informed me that we have no need nowadays for the beliefs and institutions of yesteryear. He himself, he said, could outline a better moral system and better political pattern than those we have inherited. I asked him if he could build a gasoline engine, say, without reference to anything mechanical now existing. He replied that he could not. I observed that moral and social concerns really are more delicate and complex than a mere mechanical contrivance. In other words, if you try to build a good world without tradition, the best you can hope for is the societal equivalent of a Flintstones car. We've got this incredible inheritance from our ancestors, but we don't care. It's like your dad gave you a Mickey Mantle rookie card, and you're using it as a coaster. Instead of continuing and expanding our tradition, we decided to put our faith in ideologies, abstractions over concrete realities. But as Kirk says, the American order of our day was not founded upon ideology. It was not manufactured. Rather, it grew. You can't save the world in a test tube, but you can destroy it. Just just ask this guy. It's true that we need to build something new here, but that new thing has to be dependent on the old. We can't start from scratch, and we shouldn't. We'd be disobeying the fifth commandment. But to do that right, we have to know the difference between the artifact and the dirt, between the statue and the spray paint, between the painting and the soup. One last quote from Kirk. Permanence and progression are not enemies, for there can be no improvement except upon a sound foundation, and that foundation cannot endure unless it is progressively renewed. The traveler in the wasteland seeks the shelter of living order. Chaos doesn't produce order. Neither does ideology. The only thing that produces order is order. Okay, I like it again. 